Welcome back to my channel, and as always, thanks to my subscribers. There's no diplomatic way to say this. This is not a model. It's either a toy or it's a collectible. Tyco produced this boxcar as one of a series of cars celebrating the statehood anniversaries of at least six states, including this one commemorating Rhode Island. There is no prototype for this model. The car has no reporting marks, which would be required to operate on any railroad, and the detail is considerably poorer than even the entry-level, ready-to-run cars you might see in a boxed train set. In addition, this car has seen hard times. The brake wheel is missing, one of the cast-on stirrup steps is missing, and one end of the rooftop running board has broken. Given this damage and lacking the original box, any value as a collectible is nil. However, the car has two redeeming qualities. First, I bought it for less than a dollar. And second, it will serve as a good example of how to replace cheap truck-mounted couplers with improved trucks and body-mounted couplers. So follow along as I turn this car into this one. And watch the entire video to hear an important announcement. I start as always by removing the underbody from the car. There are four tabs, two on either side of the car, holding the underbody in place. Next, I glue the broken running board back in place using super glue. When gluing small parts with super glue, I apply CA accelerator to one piece and I apply super glue to the other piece. Carefully bring the two pieces together. You'll have just a matter of seconds to get the alignment correct. With the running board repaired, I remove the remaining three stirrup steps. A few minutes with a number 18 blade and a set of sprue cutters, and a few passes with a sanding stick is all that it takes to remove the stirrup steps. I have described attaching new stirrup steps in my video, Breathe New Life into Old Freight Cars, so I won't repeat that here. I glue the replacement brake wheel in place, again using super glue, and the car body is ready for painting. This turned out to be a mistake. I will need to mask off the end of the car to paint the roof, and the brake wheel will make that task more difficult. I have made a mental note to paint the brake wheel separately in the future and to install it after the paint and decals are complete. This will make the car easier to handle during construction. Now for the underbody. Like all Tyco cars, this car is equipped with truck mounted couplers. It is a simple task to snap the trucks out of their mounts. I simply discard them. They are of no use to me. The body weight is held in place by two plastic tabs at either end and by a raised hub in the center of the car. Flex the under frame gently to pop the weight off the center hub, then slide the weight out from under the end tabs. Now we are faced with the problem of mounting better trucks in place of the original trucks. Since the mounting hole is too large to accept a number 256 screw, I need to build a new truck mount. Evergreen styrene tubing is perfect for this task. I need two sizes, 1 8 inch number 224 and 3 16 inch number 226. These are designed so the 1 8 inch tubing exactly fits inside the 3 16 inch tubing, and I can tap a hole in the 8 inch tubing to accept a number 256 screw. There are only two tricky bits to this process. The first is drilling the truck mounting hole to 3 16 inch diameter. Do not use an electric drill for this. Drills have too much torque and you will ruin the underbody. I use this Black & Decker electric screwdriver. As you can see it operates at a low speed and is perfect for drilling holes in styrene. The second trick is this. Be sure the 1 8 inch tubing protrudes about 1 millimeter beyond the end of the larger tubing. This will form a kingpin, which keeps the truck centered on the bolster. The Accurail side frames I use fit nicely over the 1 8 inch tubing. Here is a close-up of a completed kingpin assembly that I did for a different Tyco car. With the truck mount glued in place, you can file any excess length off the top side of the underframe allowing the weight to fit back into position. I need to make one more modification to the underbody. 
The body mount couplers will attach to the underframe by a 256 screw on the center line of the car, about a quarter inch away from the car end. This is precisely where the underbody has been cut out for the tabs which hold the weight in place. So I will cut a notch out of the end of the underbody and replace it with a rectangle of 40 thousandths styrene. A nibbling cutter, make like this one, makes cutting the notch in the underframe a breeze. Finally, I glue the weight in place using Crafter's Pick Ultimate Glue, as explained in Breathing New Life into Old Freight Cars. Now it's time to paint. First, I paint the underbody flat black. When that paint is dry, I mask off everything except the four tabs that hold the underbody in place. I will paint those tabs to match the car body color. Next, I prime the car body. This will help the paint adhere to the new stirrup steps, and it will also let the car body color cover more evenly. Here is the car after the first coat of primer. As you can see, the garish paint job will require a second coat. I am planning to paint and letter this car as a railbox box car. I will use micro scale decal set 87-1291. I don't have any railbox yellow railroad paint but I do have some Rust-Oleum Painter's Touch 2X Marigold, which is a pretty good substitute. The Railbox cars had a more complex paint scheme than most. The car body was yellow, the doors were black, and the roof was aluminum. Once the base color had cured, I masked off the roof with Tamiya masking tape and painted the roof in aluminum using Scale Coat 2 aluminum paint. Scale coat is no longer available, but both Tamiya and True Color make an aluminum color spray paint. Then I masked the doors and sprayed them with flat black. There are three keys to masking your models. First, you need a good smooth surface. Paint will seep into the edges through any surface irregularities on your model. Second, use a good masking tape. I have had poor results using the blue painter's tape, and I have had good results using Tamiya masking tape. Third, use a burnishing tool to seal the edges of the masking tape. I use this dry transfer burnishing tool. Once the paint is cured, it's time to apply decals. I just have to be careful about two dates. The build date must be earlier than 1966, because cars built after that date were built without rooftop running boards. The most recent shop date needs to be after 1974 when Railbox was founded, but before 1982 when rooftop running boards were banned in interchange service. I used a microscale decals freight car data set to customize these dates. Here is the completed car body. For more information on applying decals, see my video, Breathing New Life into Old Freight Cars. This car is absolutely not faithful to any prototype, but it is certainly believable. This car could have been a used car that was repainted in the Railbox livery shortly after the company was founded. Those of you who follow my videos know that this car will never see service on my layout for two reasons. First, with a shop date of 1974, the car is too new to fit in my late 1950s era layout. And second, since the car is 50 scale feet long, it is too long to fit on my very small layout. Therefore, I am going to give the completed car to one of my subscribers. I will provide contest entry instructions at the end of this video. Now it's time to snap the underframe into place. Position the tabs on one side of the underframe in the holes in the car body. Then spread the car body to allow the other tabs to fall into position. I had to exert some gentle pressure in order to get the tabs to lock into the car body holes. With the underframe in place, you can now see why I took the effort to paint the tabs to match the car body color. Once the underframe has been snapped into the body, I can mount the trucks and couplers. Do not over tighten the screws. The styrene is strong enough to hold the screws tightly, but the threads can be stripped without too much effort. You should tighten both trucks until they rotate, but do not rock side to side. Then loosen just one truck screw by a quarter turn. 
This should keep the car from derailing when it passes over uneven track work. You might need to file the kingpin a bit shorter to allow the truck screws to tighten properly. Once the couplers and trucks have been mounted on the car, it is time to check the coupler clearances. As you can see, there is a noticeable sag to the couplers. This can be improved by trimming the sides off a number 5 coupler centering spring and inserting it in the draft box as shown here. I'm using a pair of shears made to cut photo etched brass, but regular scissors work fine. If the coupler is too high, you can add shims between the coupler gearbox and the car body. If it is too low, you can add washers between the trucks and the bolsters. After reinstalling the couplers, the coupler height is perfect as you can see here. And that's it. The car is ready to install on your layout. And now for the giveaway. I will send this completed boxcar free of charge to one of my subscribers. To be eligible, you need to do three things. First, be sure you have subscribed to my channel. Second, make sure your channel subscriptions are public so that I can verify that you are indeed a subscriber. This is critical. If I cannot confirm that you are a subscriber, I will discard your entry. To make your subscriptions public, click the menu icon in the upper left corner of the YouTube screen, scroll down to Settings, click Settings, then click Privacy. Make sure that Keep All My Subscriptions Private is turned off. Third, send me an email with the words Giveaway Entry as the subject line and your YouTube handle in the text of the email. My email address is shown here, and it is available on the About tab on my channel page. Don't bother to enter more than once. I will discard duplicate entries. Entries will be accepted for 30 days after I post this video. For clarity, I will include the final date of the entry period in the video description below. When the 30-day period is ended, I will select an entry at random from all the qualified entries I receive. I will post the name of the winner on the community tab and I will inform the winner by email. The winner will receive this freight car free of charge. I have included links to all the products mentioned in this video in the comments below. As always, I would love to hear your comments and questions. If you want to see more videos of this type, be sure to subscribe and hit that like button. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.